feel like last year Harrison really stole the spotlight. Despite you being a clear fan favourite, you're the oldest, you're the more popular one, you've got a much better attitude than Harrison, and yet he was featuring in all the videos, and he was the one who got a gift of Majestic. Another day, another project that I'm intending on being simple, but there's a good chance it won't be. What I would like to work on today is kind of a, a bit of a two-parter. It's a ramp, an underground ramp tunnel thing, and then also an underground burrowy, tubey thing. Look, I'm not going to apologise for my inability to describe things. You're used to it at this point. You can't be surprised. You can't be shocked. This is why I have illustrations. This, this thing. It's a two, it's a this and it's a th two things that, mm. And essentially this is going to be a kind of extension onto what we've already built. The ramp that I'll be building will be connecting onto the little circular door hole thing in the bottom of the brick wall thing. <sighs> I'd like you to take into consideration for a second that I was an A-star written language student. I, I was consistently in the top group of my class throughout my school career when it came to written language in English, I should say. I should clarify, yes, in English. I was working to be a journalist. I've had my writing published before. What happened between 18 years old and now? I don't do the word out the mouth good, okay? Brain can think word, but brain can't translate word into sound that comes out mouth and makes sense. All right? <sighs> what are we doing? I have not decided what my painting plans are for this, this part of the project. I gotta move away from the bricks, I gotta move away from the stones, I gotta move away from the complicated stuff. I don't have the time for this. I need to move things forward. Now let us go and cut some wood. Beginning by making the ramp, I have measured out a parallelogram, as you can see here. In fact, I have two of these, but the other one is over on this side, so you, you can't really see it. This one matters more for this moment in time. The two long sides are about 25.2 centimeters, the two short sides are about 11.5 centimeters, I believe, and the acute angles measure about 60 degrees. Now, the reason I'm only focusing on this piece and not this piece is because this one is going to be the back of the ramp. You're not really gonna see this, but this one is gonna be the front. This will be pushed up against the glass, and so I do wanna create a window feature on the front of here, so you you can see the hamster moving up and down the ramp. Initially, I chose to paint both these pieces grey, and once I'd done two layers of paint and waited for both those layers to dry, I realised I hated it. So then I just repainted the whole thing green. And I hated that as well. So then I re-repainted the entire thing a slightly lighter shade of green, which is fine, except for the front bit, which I decided I didn't like that being green, I wanted that to be white, so I re-re-repainted just the front bit white. But then I felt the front was missing just a tiny little bit of detail, so I re-re-re-repainted just the inside of the window ledges and the outer edges of the parallelogram to this bright, bright orange. I hadn't predicted the orange drying quite as pigmented as that. It's fine. We're not re-re-re-re-re-painting it. I've already spent four days painting just this part of the build. I, I don't need to spend any more time on it. But today's lunch we're serving lolly sticks with a side of Cork, 14,000% of your daily fiber recommendations. The cork measures 10 centimeters by 25 centimeters and I will be using 14 of these fabulous jumbo sized lolly sticks to make the roof and the bottom of my little rampy do, my rampy friend, ramptastic. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. But uh. Oh, that worked. Smother this in some pet safe glue. Mm. 
That's an excessive amount. You didn't need to use that much. No one to stop. <sighs> this is why you're always running out of glue. Oh, that, I, I, that, that's not just an excessive amount. That's, this is beyond excessive. Disappointed in myself. Yet not the least bit surprised. I'm fighting the strongest urge to lick that. Wow, that shouldn't look as tasty as it does. But it does. Oh, thank goodness I've just heard Dan arrive home. I will be saved from eating the glue covered cork. Hello. Hello. Oh no, oh no, oh no. It's squidging through. No. Now let's just leave that to dry. Nobody needs to know. You know how I'm always telling you guys that I'm an idiot? I left the lolly sticks drying under a weight last night so that they didn't end up curving up because lolly sticks have a tendency to do that and it's kind of annoying. But I also left them drying under a piece of wood when I knew full well that there was an excessive amount of glue on the other side of this that would very likely squidge through. And what are the lolly sticks made of? Wood. What is the glue stick? Wood. What was the thing I put on top of the lolly sticks that were covered in glue? Wood. Ah. <laughs> And it's still curved. So that's the lolly sticks all cut down to size. It's still a flipping bridge. I do just have to paint this, but I want to show you one thing that's absolutely infuriating me. I made one of these already. I made the bottom half of this. That's how that turned out. Do you see the difference? Do you see the difference in the one that I made off camera versus the one that I made on camera so I can look like an idiot in front of everyone? Why couldn't the good one be the one that I made while I was filming? Ah! This isn't as big of an issue as it looks like because once it's glued down, it will just stay flat and that won't matter. But it, it's just... Yeah, typical is what it is. There is one key difference between the non-catastrophic piece and the catastrophic piece, apart from the obvious. And that is that this piece, if I flip it over, has more lolly sticks on it. Look at these teeny tiny baby lolly sticks, they're so cute. And these are here to serve the purpose of being tiny little foot grips, as this is the floor of the ramp. This time, we use a reasonable amount of glue. Spread that out. I need to make sure that I'm gluing this on the right way up, because if I don't, I will cease to exist. Glue you down to Funky Town. You also glue. Very good. You stay there. Don't you move. I need to put tape on you. Hmm. How are we gonna do this? Ah! Screaming helps. Tape, tape, tape you on. Thank you very much. Ah! And now for the problem, child. Stick down, stay where I put you. Why wasn't I born with more arms? I need them. Keep reminding myself, this bit's gonna be hidden. Nobody is going to see it. It will be under the bedding. It will not matter. Only me and the few thousand people who watch this video will know about it. It shall be the greatest secret of the century. Do you think it would be a terrible idea if, if, if I just, Seems to be holding. We've made it onto the second part of the DIY. Hooray for us! I have deviated slightly from my original design for this. Instead of doing round windows, I went with square windows. So here's the front wall of the tunnel section. Here is the back wall of the tunnel section. It includes this little doorway to nowhere. Literally, it is just a doorway to nowhere. I have absolutely no plans of extending onto this, building anything that's gonna come out of this. It will just be flat up against the bedding. And the reason I've done that is to simply provide the option of the hamster extending onto the burrow themselves if they want to, so they can just burrow out of the pre-made structure and build something behind it. We also have the end wall and the central wall and the roof. This you can ignore for now. These pieces we're gonna paint. And once again, I have no painting plan, so we may be re-re-re-re-re-re-re-painting -re 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 these several times this week.
Settled on a white, yellow, and purple colour scheme with just a little bit of pink. May have slightly overlined with the purple. But thankfully I'm already too exhausted with this project to do any repainting, so this is what we're sticking with. Before I go about assembling this part, I want to address one little thing. Obviously this is supposed to be a tunnel, but it's got these big hole windows in the front, which seems a bit counterproductive, really. If I was making this tunnel for anywhere else in the enclosure, if I was making it just to be on a shelf or in the back of the cage or something, I would cover the backs of these holes with some perspex, so it would just be a nice, clear window. But because this is going to be pressed, up against the glass at the front of the cage, it's already going to be blocked, essentially, and it doesn't need an extra layer of perspex on the back. If I were to put perspex on the back and then also have glass on the front, I have learned with previous mistakes that all that ends up happening there is you get this little pocket in the window that just gets filled with seeds and bedding and all sorts of things you don't want to get in there and it's such a pain to clean. So by not putting perspex on the back of this in its current situation, I'm saving myself a massive headache. Hello adhesive, my old friend. Sticky sticky. Stay. Stick. Stay. What did I tell you? If I turn around and you move, I will not be happy. <laughs> the return of your favorite superhero. Masking tape man! Doing a very good job of sticking. Well done, 10 out of 10. Very good. And while that's drying, you can stop ignoring the lid because we're working on that now. The underside is painted beige because who cares what color the underside is? And the front edge of the lid, the part that will be against the glass and therefore visible, I have painted a nice shade of soft pink. As for the other three edges, I'll be lining these with wooden dowels to create a sort of fence-like feature and the top of the lid is gonna have some cork on it. Say something meaningful, say something I don't know. That you talk to me, the way that you make me feel. I don't know if you're real. I wanna put you in that spotlight, looking at you all night. Put you in that spotlight. Oh, you make me feel right. Wanna look at you all night. Put you in that spotlight. Oh, you know. That is looking as good as it's gonna get. It's not too bad, I don't think. Ah! Except for the bit where I just dropped half of them on the floor. Wow, talk about speaking too soon. If you are now covered in cat hair, I will be not the least bit surprised, but still very upset. Ugh. Ah, sticky, sticky, sticky. So now let's try and put this back together. Oh, great. Perfect, great time. No one ever calls me when I'm free, when I'm doing nothing. It's only ever when I'm filming. Love that for me. Hello. Okay. May need to be concerned about that. Let's not worry about it right now. He is thousands of miles away. I hope. And by the time he gets back home, I'm sure he'll have calmed down from it. I hope. That is as good as it's gonna get. So now if we just leave it, don't touch it, stop touch, stop touching it, leave it how it is, let it dry, and we shall come back to it later. One small addition has been made. There's a little purple bar running between those two because I, I noticed they were kind of pinching in a little bit, so let's solve that. And the final step in this project is to add the support legs. These are gonna stop the whole thing from coming crashing down on top of my hamster if they do decide to burrow underneath any of this. Haven't bothered painting them because they are gonna be completely hidden by the bedding anyway, so that really doesn't matter. For the ramp, I've made an angled support that's made of two legs and a center beam. And for the tunnel section, I've screwed thick wooden dowels onto strips of wood. And sandwiched in between those two parts is a thinner slice of wood that overhangs the edges just a little bit for additional support.
Turns out I cut the legs of the tunnel just a little bit on the small side, so I had to give it its own little step to sit on just to make it tall enough. I think I might make the shelf of the tunnel into the watering slash snacking area of the enclosure. That way, because it's right at the front of the cage, I'll get to see my hamster being adorable all the time. There's nothing cuter than a hamster drinking. It's the tiny little tongues and the little wet cheeks. They're just so cute. Anyway, thank you so much for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to leave a thumbs up, comment down below, come follow me on Instagram, check out my merch shop, all the usual stuff, you're used to it by now. And I will see you guys, hopefully, kinda soon. <laughs> Bye.